again for Tidy Up Tuesday. Welcome, welcome, and I'm so glad you are here on this Thanksgiving week. Um, I hope you all are having a good time getting ready if you are celebrating Thanksgiving. I still have to do my big old shopping haul, but I'm getting there. <laughs> so today we are going to talk about something that's been highly requested, which is three tips for organizing your memorabilia. Okay, so <laughs> welcome. Bonjour, Chantal from Quebec. Welcome, welcome. I love it. So I see you, uh, YouTube got the notifications. I'll kind of let you guys have a chance to get your notice that we are rolling live and please say hello. Love to see who's here and where you're from. And Cindy's here from Facebook. Awesome. Thank you guys. Okay. So did that kind of catch your attention? Like what, what about m memorabilia, right? Let's talk a little bit about memorabilia. Um, and it's not, I, I just want to say, first off, <laughs> first off, I'm not the expert, okay? I Memorabilia is tricky, isn't it? Because as crafters, as scrapbookers, we tend to hoard stuff, okay? Let's just call it what it is. We really do tend to kind of keep everything because we're like, oh, Oh my gosh, what if I need to put this in the scrapbook, right? What if it needs to go in the scrapbook? Because, and so then our piles become bigger and bigger and our stuff becomes bigger and bigger. And at least that's what happened to me. And it has been a hard and long process and I am nowhere near finished to try to get a handle on memorabilia. But what I'd like to do today is kind of give you some food for thought. That's always what I just feel like I can offer you. You might take one thing that I do and go, mm, I want to incorporate that. Or you might like the whole shebang, like, oh, I want to do it just like Lauren does it. So it's really your choice. I never want to say this is the way, this is the only way. Um, but really kind of this is what I've tried. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, all those kind of things. So that's that's where I come from. That's the place where I come from. So today what I want to do is talk about those three tips. And just as a quick um, note before we jump in, um, I did have a really great conversation with my pop live group on memorabilia. I mean, we really took a deep dive into memorabilia. So if you are part of my Pop Live membership, don't forget that that video is still available for you to watch on replay. So even if you're a brand new member, you can go back, um, I believe it was two or three months ago. I think three months a week. Anyhow, it, it's labeled. Um, and, and we talked in depth about memorabilia and I gave you a memorabilia checklist. So don't forget about that. And also, speaking of my pop live, we had, so we just had our pop um, crop last Saturday, and I had such a great group of gals, and they were like, Lauren, are you going to do this in 2023? And so I've been thinking a lot about that, and I do, as long as you guys enjoy getting together on Zoom um, once a month on Saturday, I'm going to keep it up. But I also thought, we've taken this whole year and really talked about organization, how the um, pro how to make progress on your projects, how the pop system works, gone into different depths on different things. And so my focus for 2023, I'd like to be a little different. And what I'm going to do is it's still going to be the four hour workshop. OK, four hour Zoom crop together and the recordings will always be available. Uh, but what I'm going to do is switch it up a little bit. And you know how much I love doing base pages and borders. So what would you say if every month you got a new set of sketches for base pages and a border? That's what I think I'm going to do for 2023. So every month, part of the pop crop will be that you get um, you get to watch me create the base page and the border 
and then we'll just spend the rest of our time cropping and, and I'll still answer your pop questions like that will still be available for you but I just kind of wanted to try something new for 2023 and so um, I'd love to hear your comments about that see what you think I know that's a little off topic of memorabilia but it kind of does it connects as well because we did talk a lot about memorabilia in the pop crop okay Woo. So hello, hello, my friends. Yudi's here. Sheree is here. Carol, Mary. Okay. Oh, you guys are saying you'd love that. Okay, good. That's that's kind of my latest. Ah, oh, let's do that. Diane is here. Susan. Joy's here. Sunshine. Pam. I love that name. Ruth's here. Audra. Joy. Suzanne. Jay. Connie, Denise, Mary, have I said some of these already? Okay, I think I did. Carolyn, Linda, Marsha, Beverly, Amber, Steph. Oh my goodness, it's so wonderful to see all your names. Leah's here, Cindy's here, Sherry's here. Wonderful, thank you and welcome. Okay, so let's jump in with memorabilia. Like I said, this is still a little tricky. So, you know, if you guys have amazing things to share, let me know in the comments, you know, put it up there for people to uh, read and get the benefit of, because as we come together as a community, whoo, we have all of the, um, you know, exciting things that happen uh, for all your resources and ideas. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to switch to my overhead and um, let's start first with my tip note, so I tried to get my camera as high up <laughs> as I possibly could because I'm gonna be talking um, about some big things here. But what I wanted to do is start with my first tip, okay? Tip number one, and, and this is kind of a no-brainer. Maybe you guys have already done that, done this. But my tip number one for getting a handle on your memorabilia is create a hub. And I love that word. My friend Donna is the one who turned me on to that word long ago when we were um, talking about some training I did for my team about creating a content hub. This also works for your memorabilia. You've got to have a place. So not in the drawer of the dresser in your bedroom and then also, you know, a few shelves in your living room and maybe a couple boxes in the garage. You guys know who, who I'm talking about, right? Instead, what I want you to do is gather everything into one place. See if you can designate one area that you can have for your memorabilia. And that, you you know, it's kind of like pictures as well. well you've got to get all your pictures into one place. You've got to get all your thoughts into one place. That is one of my biggest tips I've learned for organization. If I want to understand what I have, I have to have it all in one place. You've got to start there. So even if you get a couple big plastic bins, you know what I'm talking about, those big bins, get those start gathering things in there if you have um groupings of things then you know put those in the bin once you have your big bin or boxes or maybe it's an ikea unit or whatever it is once you have that then you can take a step back and take a look at what you have to organize and get a handle on First of all, you know, what are your priorities and, and what do you really need to keep and so forth. And we'll, we'll talk some more about that too. Okay, so first step, get it all in one place. So that's what I mean with the hub is get it, whoops, all in one place. You can hardly see that. <laughs> okay, that's it. Get it all in one place. Yeah. Let me try that again with the big fat side. <laughs> okay, get it all in one place. Okay, so that's my first first tip. First tip, 
create a hub, get it all in one place. Whatever you can use, whatever you've got around, whatever you need, you need to get it out of all the different places where they might be and get it into one place. Okay, so, and you're probably going, um, yeah, Lauren, we all knew that, but you've got, I, I feel like I've got to say it. I just feel like I've got to say it, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, second. Okay, any questions? So get it all in one place. Get it all in one place. And then then you get the, the idea of what you have. You might have boxes. You might have containers. You might have a bunch of stuff like this that doesn't make any sense at all. But you need to get it all in one place. Then the second thing... And this is going to be a little tricky because this is really where your personality and your organization style comes into play. So this is tip number one. Tip number two is choose your storage. Okay, so... We're going to talk a little bit about this because this is all about organization, right? Um, so choose your storage. There are so many choices when it comes to how you're going to put things together. So what I'd like to do for a little while is talk about some different ideas. And, and again, like I said, you can take some of these like, yes, yes, we're going to get that. We're, I'm going to do that. I like it. And then you might like one thing or you might like one thing or one organizer that I'm going to share with you. And then maybe that's going to make the aha happen and um, make it make it work for you. OK, so one of the biggest things when you're choosing your storage, this is what I found. <laughs> Remember, we've we've got all these like, are you a glancer or a grouper? Are you a, um, you know, whatever? Those you remember our fun thing. So <laughs> here's another one. This is all about you, you guys. Do you like vertical or horizontal? That's up to you. Which one do you prefer? I found for the most part when, especially when I'm kind of going through uh, memorabilia, I, I really like vertical storage. But that question, that first question is vertical or horizontal? That's going to help you decide on the types, the types of storage that you're going to want to use in your space. Okay. Once you've gathered it all in, then you need to look. So I just want to click on this picture. So what do I mean be about vertical versus horizontal? So this is what I mean about horizontal. <clears throat> these are some of my um, favorite little iris cases. Now these are the the little ones. They're about an inch tall, but they are 12 by 12. And I do have them linked on my Amazon page, but they are um, not always easy to find. Okay, I'll just say that. And then let me come over here. So once again, this is the Amazon page and um, I have this linked in the description. <clears throat> and so you'll see there's eight and a half by 11 of these iris cases. And then if you go all the way down, there's also 12 by 12. Now, these are just ones that I could find. Where did it go? Right here. No, not there. I just saw them. Anyhow, 12 by 12. They're here somewhere. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Um, when you, maybe they're, they're not available. I don't know. Maybe Amazon takes them off if they're not available. When I, when I link stuff, I don't always have super duper control <laughs> over um, how that works with Amazon. So let me just say that really quick. Um, so if you see something like this, these are eight and a half by 11. I know I just saw the 12 by 12 on here because I was working on this last night. Okay, Lauren, where did they go? 
Um, okay. But what I always encourage you to do, let me just say, oh, here they are right here. 10 pack clear. Okay. These are the 12 by 12, but look at the price. So do your homework and shop around. Sometimes what I want to do is put the thing on my Amazon page, but I encourage you to shop, right? Because I don't say like, no, you have to buy it here. No, I want you to get the best price that you can find. This is the product that I like. You can get it here, but I always encourage you to try to find the best price, especially for my Australian friends and my Canadian friends who don't have all the same stuff we have here in the US. Okay, the other one, the reason I stopped here is this is another um, horizontal storage option. Okay, so this is a six tier scrapbook rolling cart and I tried this for a while and I do still, like you saw the picture, I do still have a few bins that have um, a project in them and the memorabilia is with the project. Okay, so also, and, and here's the other thing, friends, you don't have to pick one. You can, maybe you're both, maybe you're um, horizontal and vertical. So one of the things I wanted to just show you, though, is that there are different types, right? So if you like that kind of slot system of going horizontal, you could do something like that, just like what I showed you. And that iris case, um, those have the taller um, boxes, but you can also put two of the smaller ones in there. So I you know, I encourage you kind of figure out like how does you, how do you scrapbook? How how does your brain work? What's easiest for you? And then, um, you know, let's talk about some some of the products that can help you get organized. Okay, so choose your storage, horizontal and vertical. So let me also kind of go into a little bit about. I'm going to just set these aside. We're going to come back to number three. I promise. Let me talk a little bit about um, ways of grouping, <laughs> ways of grouping your stuff. Okay, so as I mentioned, you know, kind of as scrapbookers, you might have, or as memory keepers, or as moms, as, you know, um, historians trying to document your family history, you might have a ton of stuff. So one of the first things, you know, you, you have to do when you get everything, you don't have to, but you, you could do when you get everything in one place is start thinking about the categories, right? So what kind of categories work best for you? For me, one of the big categories was my kids. Hands down. Kids, they needed their own box of memorabilia. And then my family needed the family scrapbooks and different projects I'm doing for them. They needed their own place. And then um, and then I had a flood in my basement. And so then I took a bunch of stuff out and had to hang it dry. Like you can see this, got water damaged. And so everything was hanging on, on, on clothes pins and string and everything got mismatched again. So right now, all of this went, had to go into one place, but I have it labeled Audrey. At least I know my kids helped me after that big ordeal last year. They at least helped me put it in piles as to who it belonged to. So I still have a lot of work ahead because I had a lot of damage from water that kind of set me behind with my kid stuff. But I want to talk for a minute about what I did, how, what this container, what this is. I have been using these pockets, I don't know, for 10 years, I think. And this exact pocket, I just have not been able to find with the snap. But these are big gusseted 13 by 13 plastic pockets, okay? And I'm gonna show you a few ways that I use this. So this is one option. And the 
um, I have this linked. So what I found for you that is still available on Amazon are, you know, something you could search for as well right here. The plastic envelopes with button and string tie. They are the same size. They are the 13 by 13 with a big gusset. And I've actually bought some of these um, that I do have some of, because when they ran out of snap ones, um, uh, this is what I went to. Okay, so I think this is, you get 24. I'm not quite sure. Let me see how many, if it's going to pull up. I'm not sure how many, um, but so this is a similar product to what I have in front of me. Okay, so let me go back to overhead. Did you guys see that? <laughs> okay, hold on. I don't know if I, did I do the screen share? Your Hobby Lobby, yeah. Okay, so it's right here, the jam paper. <laughs> I don't know if I, if I clicked over. The jam paper right here with the button and string. Um, if Hobby Lobby still has them, yeah, I forgot to check there but that would be another place you could find it. Okay, um, the ones the the ones with the button, these were, I think the brand is Generations. So you could see, I really like these. And I'll show you, um, let me see, where did I put that one? The, one of the reason, one of the things I like using this one for is, hold on. So you can also, stick a little label holder. So if you saw that on my um, Amazon page, I love these little stick on label holders because they also give you a place to write information. Okay, so when you've got this big old pocket, what I wanted to do was this is again going into kids. This is Audrey. This was her seventh grade memorabilia. I know some of that got water damage and it didn't get in here. Luckily, these photos were in a separate bin. Um, and then this is the school she was at. This was the school year and it was her 13th birthday. So having a little card that you can stick in here that give that you can kind of quickly glance. Okay, so when I'm pulling out something like this I, I could look and see does this have a date it doesn't have a date so i have no idea maybe this one has a date oh okay this one has a date 2018 2019 so i can quickly look and go oh that's not this date range i'm gonna have to find the file with 2018 2019 then i can just boom slip that in there okay so that's one of the things I like about a quick glance. This is like a little quick reference guide for my kids. I love doing this. And you can also include um, on some of them, like some I did where I even just took an index card. So you can do that as well. And you can include their teacher, who their teacher was. And if they have, sometimes they have a number, right? Like they're number seven. I know sometimes that's how I was um, uh, going through schoolwork and I would know, I, I think I've already, this one's not a good example. I um, Let me see, this one might have it. You know, they write right here, number seven on their schoolwork. So here we go, number seven. So if I come across a piece of memorabilia or schoolwork that has a number seven on it most likely it was when she was in third grade okay so just a few little tips for kids now like i said this is not always an easy thing and what i found is i tend to keep way more than i'm going to scrap so we're going to talk a little bit about how to handle that like this this i have not gone through i have actually not gone through third grade to kind of weed this out this is way more than i'm gonna scrap so that would be part of my tip number three but we'll get back to that okay 
so what I wanted to share, one of my favorite ways of corralling my kids' work are in the project totes from Creative Memories. So as you can see, this is Audrey's tote and it goes baby all the way first grade, second grade, third grade, and the ones I just pulled out of here. Um, and you can see what I do is I keep these open in the bin so as I find stuff, I can just slide it in and I've got my little quick reference guide, right? I can just slide these in and then as I find things open. So this is one of the things, one of the reasons I like vertical storage is this right here, is because when I am sorting, when I'm sorting, I like being able, just like a filing cabinet, I like to be able to kind of flip and stick, flip and stick it in there and just go, okay, this is this. Now, if you're doing horizontal, you may need to create piles, like set up a six foot table or work on your bed, a spare bed, or even on the floor. Um, and you might need to make piles that are gonna kind of do the same things that these, folders do, right? And so you can have those in piles and then organize those horizontally kind of in however way, in, in slots or in the iris cases or however you like to do it, you could use the same ideas here. Okay, so that's a little bit about vertical. So this is one way. This is with those big, um, big pockets. And so I wanted to make sure to show you that. And, and the reason, again, I use the big pockets is because my kids, you know, schoolwork, a lot of schoolwork came home, right? So this is another project tote for my family. And this one, of course, we're going to organize differently instead of by school year or by grade, we're gonna organize by year, right? Because that's the way I scrapbook most often, um, is by year and then also by theme. And, um, you know, we won't get into all the ways I scrapbook. But for the most part, what I wanted to do was have a place that I could flip through. Once again, this is vertical storage. So as I find things, I can flip it in here. Now, this might look like, oh my gosh, Lauren has it all together. Oh no, oh no, because this is the stuff I have filed. This is the box of stuff. This is my one of my hubs. This is the box of stuff I have not filed, right? So I am in the trenches with you. I'm, I always say I'm in the trenches with you. But at least it's in one place and I know, okay, I've got to get through this box. And then, so I've gathered it into one place. But then as I touch it, as I pull something out, I want to have a place to put it, which is why I have this set up. So this is set up with uh, smaller sleeves, as you can see. And I labeled the years with my label maker on all of these. So let's talk for just a second about what you can use for kind of a smaller format uh, file system because boy, you can you can get a lot more in a in a box this way, right? Okay, so <clears throat> you know I'm always looking for different products. Love <laughs> love shopping and seeing what have they come up with, what have they created. And just like we talked about these guys for paper storage, the Samsil um, paper file, this is a great smaller format pocket. It does have a gusset, okay? So if you need a little bit more, but not as much as those big ones, like, like the ones I showed you here, this is a huge gusset, right? This expands. Oh, I got to use this side. That's about an inch and a half expansion on the gusset. This is a much smaller gusset. Okay, here. 
So if you want something smaller, this is a great product. One of my tips also is that you need what makes it easier for flipping and filing with vertical storage is to have some substance, right? So to have some um, something that's going to help it stay upright. So if you look at, um, let me just grab one of these. If you look at my 1991, I ended up using, I just had some white cardstock and then I used a label maker to help give some bulk and some, you know, so that it would stand up and it wouldn't just keep flopping. To me, I, you know, we, we have to tame the bulge, but we also have to not flop. Okay, so to help not flop, this is, this is a way you can use if you have some extra layout boards from Creative Memories. These are a Creative Memories product. The Project Totes are a Creative Memories product. I love the layout boards, and I'm going to show you a few little things that I've been using these differently for today as well. So you can slide the project boards in here and now you have a way that you could label that project board and have, you know, a pocket behind it. So this gives that little bit of a stiffness to, you know, a vertical file storage system. <clears throat> so Here's the Samsil, okay, and these are pretty rigid on their own. I want to share another, so this one actually is the record sleeve. So we've talked about Baby Bear record sleeves um, in paper organization, but I found a new thing. I did, I did, I found a new thing, <laughs> and that's what I used right here. This has no gusset okay it's a 12 by 12 plastic pocket and what's so fun is that sometimes when I'm just searching on Amazon for other things other things pop into my you know like oh you might also like this is a 12 can you kind of see a 12 by 12 pocket let me try to catch the light and my good friend Kylie actually I think she uses these and, and I kept thinking, oh man, Kylie, I wish we had those in the U.S. This is what she uses for her paper because it has this little tab and then the little tab tucks into the slot right here. Okay, just like that. And so these have no gusset. They are a very slim profile, but they are definitely about twice as thick as the record sleeve and so you can see how these are you know still kind of they don't have much structure the record sleeves I still have all my cardstock and everything in there but now I have this new favorite <laughs> I have it linked it's on my Amazon page <clears throat> and so I could see how this would also be a great storage for um, memorabilia you know you can just put the year and this is a very slim profile pocket so your second question when you are choosing your storage is you know what what do I have to kind of gather what do I have to go through Oops, sorry guys and what and what kind of what size do I need a gusset no do I need a, a medium gusset maybe yes or do I need a large gusset so there's all kinds of products which is really kind of exciting um, that you can use to help you organize so this last one I think you get they're they're rather inexpensive I want to say they're about a dollar a piece you get 24 for I think 24 dollars something like that or $23. So um, this is a, a fun product and you can just, the nice thing is if you get a pack of 24, that would give you two years worth, right? You could do two years worth if you wanted to label um, yearly, you could do that. So I really like, 
here you can see I've kind of just put those um, thinner pockets with the layout boards in them and it does give some nice substantial weight to it but they also work just as well they're pretty pretty stiff uh, without you know you could always just label the top of this okay so let me before I jump in here I want to uh, just mention another of course another organizer which is the power project folders and this is kind of you know I'll be honest this is a, a wonderful product creative memories product but these are not inexpensive right so this is another option for storing projects or memorabilia but it's a little more of a costly option but you have a lot of room in these pockets for um, storing your memorabilia too so I just wanted to mention that that is an option but I know for me I need to have you know, like several years worth or several grades worth. So I didn't choose this because I just needed so many pieces. Okay. Um, I also wanted to bring this out. These are some cutting mats that I found at the Dollar Tree and they are just clear. Um, they're supposed to be used in the kitchen, just cutting mats. These would also be if you don't have pockets, you could create labels like a, a larger divider. That's what I was thinking you could use this for. You could label the top here. And if you need to cut it down a little bit so that it worked with your memorabilia, this would be a way that you could kind of designate it's really hard to see because it's all so transparent but you could designate your years with these um, uh, cutting boards just really really inexpensive um, way but it's a good way that you could kind of create tabs for your filing system so I just wanted to share those with you too okay before I jump into the last little tip I have for um, all these different uses for pockets. Let me just kind of check in. Um, oh yeah, and Lynette says she used the template material for dividers. Um, so I do have a video on creating your own um, templates for your scrapbook page. So if you want to know what Lynette's talking about, I have a little box of my templates. And I have a video that shows you how I just get this material and I cut it up. But you, if you buy a bunch, right, you will have this left over. So this could be a great way to use for dividers as well. And I think I saw a question about the label maker I use. The one, it's linked on my um, Amazon page. I love this one for the main reason is it has a plug <laughs> because... I could never find batteries in my household <laughs> that were that were charged or worked. Um, so I love this label maker because it has the power cord and I never have to rely on batteries. It has a ton of fonts and pretty easy to use. Okay, this is the brother. Um, okay, so let me see. Um, kitchen cutting boards for refrigerator shelf liners. I love it. There's so many uses for these things, right? The Dollar Tree. I love I love finding, you know, really useful things. Um, and, and yeah, and they're just a nice, um, nice thickness and, and nice and sturdy. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Your batteries drain so quickly. I know, Vicki. That's why I got the plug. <laughs> That was my main qualification when I got my new label maker is it has to be plug in. <laughs> so I just need it to be always ready when I need um, to make a label. OK, yeah, I found a new thing, Ruth. I did. OK, um, so let's see. Any other questions? Lynette says she has 
big plastic bins of unfixed stuff for each child, for family, for Christmas. Yeah, for trips. I know there's so much to go through. And, um, but you, you know, I hope first you go first, let's gather it all in one place. Once you've gathered it all in one place, then you need to figure out what kind of a system, because this is not just about storage, but this is also about your system. Are you going to use the, the, iris boxes? Are you going to use um, dividers? Are you going to use the project totes? Are you going to use, you know, gusset versus no gusset? What works for you? Once you decide on that, you've got to have that set up so that when you start going through and touching your, your big bins of unsorted stuff, that's the key right there. We need to connect. You have to have your system ready to go. So that when you touch your, your stuff you need to organize, you touch it once, you pull it out, and you put it where it's going to stay until you're ready to do something with it, scrap it, so on and so forth. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, you, really, you, you really have to think a little bit about this. Are you vertical or horizontal? What kind of thing do you need? Get it set up. Get your label maker out. Label all your, you know, years if that's what you're doing. If you are doing a historical product project, maybe it's by decades. Maybe it's like I know Mary's working on weddings. Maybe it's by wedding and you have a little folder that's, um, you know, Miss Mary's wedding. And you stick a label on there that says Miss Mary's wedding. And... Um, or like I did for the kids, it's by grade. So however, whatever the thing is that you need to organize, figure out the system, figure out where it's going to live until, you know, it goes into an album. Now, the next part, <laughs> the next part, part three is, you know, you've got, so you've got your, you've got it all in one place. You figured out how you're going to store it. The next part, part three, is going to be the hard part. I promise. Where's my other card? Here it is. <laughs> but it is such the important part. Okay. You guys ready? Part three. <laughs> Keep perspective. and be selective. Do you like how that rhymes? <laughs> okay. And we talked a lot about this in my pop, pop crop, right? Keep perspective and be selective. Now this is where you start touching your stuff. Okay, so it's kind of once you have your system set up, you've gathered it all, you have your system, now we need to go through it. And this is the biggest aha that you, I hope you get. And this is going to be one of the biggest helps, hopefully, when you start going through your memorabilia, is keep perspective and be selective. In fact, you guys, get a post-it and write that down, okay? <laughs> keep perspective and be selective. Why? Because, like I said, I tend to keep too much stuff. I want it all. But, as we talked about in my pop group, too much special. When you have too many things that you are keeping to be special, then nothing feels special. If you have, you know, 35 pieces of a child's writing sample from one grade, how is that going to feel special? That doesn't feel special. If you have one or maybe two pieces of a writing sample from that one grade, that is special. So too much of a good thing really makes it feel like not a good thing. You get my drift? You got it? You understand? So... What you want to do is you want to capture what really matters most to you. That's the important thing. What matters most. And the other thing is um, also understanding 
your perspective. So what do I mean about that? And that really is two questions. Why and who? So why, why am I keeping this? And I'm going to challenge you to do a little Marie Kondo and go, does it bring you joy? Does it zing for you? <laughs> right? Marie Kondo is like the queen of understanding that too much of too much stuff is not a good thing. So perspective, perspective comes when you ask the two questions, why and who? Why am I keeping this? Am I keeping, and we had the biggest chuckle. I know if Julie A is on, we had the biggest chuckle <laughs> about cards, birthday cards, greeting cards. Like I, when I started going through and purging, this is all about purging. And Nancy says she's good about pitching, pitching and purging. Shirley says purging. <laughs> when you can do that, um, it, it's so enlightening. It's so rewarding. So why are you keeping this? Are you keeping this card because of that old philosophy that we have to scrap everything? Remember that? Like I thought I had to scrap every single photo. I had to keep every single piece of memorabilia. I had to keep everything that my kids did. And it was overwhelming. And so I, you know, too much was not a good thing. So why am I keeping this? Am I keeping this card? I mean, I kept cards from people. I couldn't even tell you who they were anymore from 20 years ago, right? I, I, ha I tossed so many cards and I know Julie A said she had the <laughs> biggest chuckle because she would start going through her cards, you know, like, and, and sometimes it's just a, you know, a, a Hallmark card with a sentiment and just somebody sign their name. There's no meaning to, you know, now I will never toss a card that my mom wrote because she always wrote a ton of stuff inside my cards, right? Of how she was feeling and that sort of thing. I'm not saying if it has value to you to toss it. I'm saying, ask yourself, why? Why are you keeping this? And then the second question is, who, who, who are you keeping it it for, right? So are you keeping this for your kids? Are you keeping this for um, posterity, you know, for uh, your family, for your heritage? Who, who are you keeping it for? Because sometimes the person who you think you're keeping it for doesn't want it. And, you know, that's just life. They don't want it. And so that's really one of the big questions to have conversations with the who's in your life. Now, if you're just doing it because this is a project that you want to do, absolutely, I get that. But if you're saying, I'm keeping all this stuff for my child and that child doesn't want all that stuff, could really care less about all that stuff, then really think about how much of it you're going to keep. And I want to share a couple things that um, I know I've mentioned before, but I just want to revisit it today because these really helped me with my why and who. And as I was going through memorabilia, this really, really helped give me a home and not just piles and piles of stuff. So as you know, I was going through, I've had, you know, my memorabilia is just, it's never ending. And one of the things I was noticing is that I had a theme of all these little tiny notes and things that I kept from the kids, from my mom, from um, my uh, husband, different different sources throughout the years. And then what I was realizing is I didn't have dates. 
I didn't, a lot of this stuff is like, oh, that was a kid. But everything, like I said, kind of got, any organization I had kind of got tossed up when I had my water damage. But I, I could tell right away if I found something that my kids drew or um, a love note that they wrote me or wrote to my husband. And I started getting this aha moment that this is a theme for me. I want to have a place where I can open and this is called, um, I, I ordered a spine for my book and I decided on the spine for this is going to be love you more because we say that all the time in our family and this is my love notes book. So all these little tiny papers like this one, mom is good and Eric is good from all across the years are all now just in pocket pages in this album. This one's from my husband. Um, again, from my husband, from Audrey. This one was super special. And I know some of you may have heard this story before, but um, this was from, I found when going through some of my mom's um, notes that she had, and she had traced my oldest, Ellen's hand, right here and then she had traced her hand and then she had um my mom was a teacher and so she had written out ellen's name and then ellen right here was trying to write her name and so this to me i wanted that in a special place so these are and here's some some of my mom's handwriting in here um those are special things so as i find all these little bitty love notes and you can see they're all kinds of different different formats different things um, they are all going in my love you more book and no chronology to this and just lots more room in here to add more more love notes this helped because now not only do I have a way of you know kind of figuring out where to put all those little pieces of golden, you know, little sayings the kids had into one place. But this is one of my favorite things to look at. So this is what I did for my family. And then speaking of my girls, one second, forgot to grab this book. I decided what my who, part of my who, a lot of what I was keeping for my, for my um, kids, my who were my girls and thinking about and having conversations, what means the most to you, I decided to do um, books about their drawings. And because they're both amazing artists, I loved capturing their journey, their art journey in an album. So I decided to put some of the memorabilia, all those little sketches and art things that they did um, as they were growing up and kind of honing their skills into an album for them, okay? And this also is expandable, right? So I can add some of the latest work that they've done. And then this is the same. That was for Audrey. I did the same for Ellen. And some of it, again, it's not chronolog chronological because these were definitely done in different points. But whenever I would come across all these little things, you know, from her art classes that she took at school or just from her doodling. This was one <laughs> when she was a baby, um, right? That you can just kind of see the history of that. And when I showed this to my girls, they loved it. This was meaningful for them. And to have it all in one place for them was something special. So when I look at the who for me that also helped me decide on the what and the where 
to put it and, and how to keep it so that it still always remains meaningful, right? I mean, that's our goal is that what we create, trying to find a place for these books here, what we create is going to be meaningful for those that we leave it to, right? So why and who? Those are two big questions. <clears throat> okay. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> so um, those are the three tips, right? Keep perspective, be selective. I, I give you all permission to throw things away. I give you permission to throw things away. I give you permission to purge. I give you permission not to scrapbook every single piece of memorabilia, but instead um, find the things of, of what makes sense to you, right? The, the why and the who. Oh, hello. Looks like I flipped back. <laughs> the why and the who. And then... Um, wonder what happened to my overhead camera. <laughs> my Mevo, where'd it go? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just talk here for a minute. Um, I can do this. <laughs> the why and the who um, for what works for you. Okay, question. Annette has, do you use pocket pages for these books to the girls' art books? Um, those are all 12 by 12 pockets. My girls' art books are all 12 by 12 pockets. And I just slip them in. And for smaller things, I'll just put a little repo adhesive and kind of stick them in there so that they're all kind of, you know, big, small, bulky, whatever. It all goes in there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. I love... I love those books. My girls love those books. They laugh every time when they see some of their original art because if you could see what they can draw now, it's pretty amazing. They both have Instagrams that are um, really just amazing to, to show off their art. So I do need to pull some of that down and put some of their later um, works in their books so that it kind of still, at this point in their life, it gives them a perspective what they were working on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. And Dr. Mom T, I love that, <laughs> did an, a scrapbook for a friend and did it with her grown son in mind. Exactly. That's what I mean about kind of the who, the why and the who um, is... Who are you doing it for? Who's gonna? Who's that legacy gonna be left for? And that's always so so important. Okay, um, I do want to share one other thing. So I need to figure out what happened to my overhead camera. So <laughs> let's see if I can. Um. Let me see, camera. Hmm. It's like my Mevo just decided to stop working. Let me see if I can, maybe I need to turn it on. Let me try. It's always good, power on, power off, right? <laughs> Sometimes that helps. Okay, so. looks like it's still not wanting to help me out today. <laughs> okay, um, I guess I'll just have to show it to you up front. So one other last little tip I wanted to share, and then I'll, I'll have a chance to go through and take a look at your comments too, is um, once, <clears throat> once you've gone through um, your memorabilia and you're actually now getting to the point of making your connections on what you actually want to document, say in a scrapbook or um, for, you know, whatever project you're working on. One of the things that I was trying out, and I mentioned this in my pop group also, is to combine power layouts with pockets. 
And one of the things that I always struggled with with power layouts is that everything was like a hot pizza, right? You like you you would um, stack these up in your power layout box, but I didn't have a visual representation of that. And so what I ended up doing one day, I just kind of thought, oh, what if I stuck, again, just like I was showing you, stuck the power layout guide in a pocket. And so now, originally I was using the um, really inexpensive uh, 12 by 12 scrapbook sleeves that have the three hole punches. And if you like that idea, you could do it and even put it in a binder. I know a few of you who I've mentioned this to before actually told me you were using it in a binder. And then um, the other choice now, now that I've found these little pockets, right? So you can kind of, maybe you can see those a little better now. Um, you could do the same thing in this. You could put the power layout guide in here and then do kind of what I'm showing you. Where is it? Like this. Okay, so there's the power layout guide and it's in the, the pocket with the no gusset. And the reason I would use the no gusset for this is because now what I'm doing is I'm taking the memorabilia, okay, you can see the memorabilia, and putting it with the photos that I'm gonna scrap. So this is for Adam for the first grade. And yep, I still haven't done it, but these are the these are the pieces of memorabilia that I decided were scrapbook worthy. I need to pick one of his first grade photos. And then if I have um, other photos that are gonna go on that page, they can go in there too. So I just kind of pulled a couple so you could see, like this was a birthday party his birthday party, so I put his invitation. So now I have kind of a grouping, and when I first did this, okay, don't don't think I just like, you know, threw all those things in there, but really, when you do, I, if you're not familiar with a power layout, this may be a little confusing, but when you do a power layout, right, it's gonna be hard not to have the overhead camera don't know what's going on with that. Um, maybe it came unplugged or something. Um, you you put your photos down on the layout boards and you kind of figure out, you know, what pictures are gonna go on that layout. Now, my photo folders also do that same thing. And I do love this system as well. If you remember, I have these for sale on my shop now. And so you could kind of use this and go, all right, so here's cake, cake, let's see, let's do cake, here's three cake photos, maybe those are gonna go on this side, and then, and maybe the pinata is gonna go there, and then on the other side, we're gonna have some of the photos from the party, people who came to the party. So again, kind of the same idea as a power layout, except it's just in the little folder. And so now I know these are the two pages, but here's the memorabilia. And the memorabilia is a little big for my photo folder. So that's why I thought, um, if you like the idea of slipping a layout board, you can go, okay, these are the photos. Here's the memorabilia. I want to go with it. So that's an option, kind of a new twist on um, power layouts. The other thing I want to mention is if you don't want to do kind of this layout, this power layout, so this I'm going to write down. This was Adam's, uh, it looks like his seventh birthday. And this was... Uh, I'd have to do the math on when that was, um, 90, so this would be 2006, okay, so I wrote that down on my, um, photo folder, and remember, I always say use pencil so that you can reuse these, but then what I want to do, and we've talked about this before, I know, but I want to remind you that you can make notes on the front of your folder to say 
birthday invitation. Okay, so what I could do is I know that with this layout, I want to use this birthday invitation. Then I don't have to, you know, maybe I'm not going to put it on a power layout, but this might go in his, um, his box of folders, right? So this will go in his box of folders for um, 2006. It'll be in his file folder for whatever grade he was in, and then it'll be for his seventh birthday. Does that make sense? So now you are, sorry, I'm trying to get, get this. I know it's, everything's backwards so you can see it. Um, so now I've got a note right here that's going to help me remember what memorabilia I have to scrap with that page. Okay. So that way you can kind of combine both things, or if you like a power layout, um, method, you know, you could even combine all of it, put your photo folder in there, put your memorabilia, and then have it all ready to go in a power layout. Now, the other thing about this is that it gives you two sides. So you have this side, and then you have this side. And that's the nice thing of the no gusset is that, um, you know, it's going to keep everything kind of tight in your place. Okay, so do I have another example? So here's another, um, you know, just scrapping some of that memorabilia. And here we go. Here's another one. Just kind of adding those photos in a layout format. Okay, so just another kind of off tip, different kind of tip. Um, but that could, you know, it's, it's all about kind of making all these different connections um, into how to use the different products and use it together to connect our memorabilia to our album making and then how to keep our organization so that it helps us in that whole process, right? Okay, hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> Right. So, um, all right, let me see if there's any new comments or questions. And um, let me see. Vicki said that, oh, I'm going to bring your comment on Vicki. Watching these videos has been so hopeful and motivating. Thank you for your gratitude. I am so grateful for you. Thank you, Vicki. I appreciate it. And, um, and Annette has a question about, would, will I add stories to the art books about the projects later? You know me, I love to story tell. And so um, I would love to do that. I also might want the girls to add their perspective um, or see what they might want to add into those art books as well. So I hope that, do you guys remember? I've talked about that before, but I know you don't always watch everything that I put out. I put up put up a lot of video content. So sometimes if you hear it again, you'll go, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Or maybe you didn't hear it at all. So I like to cycle things back around and kind of bring that up again. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Ah, Colleen has a great comment. So Colleen, I'm going to bring that up. So Colleen said, um, She's kept absolutely everything. And again, this is about perspective, right? And um, I know it's not, I'm not saying toss everything. No, no, no. Because um, what, what she mentioned, oh, it went away already. Let me pull it back on here again. But her, um, at one point, it's, all, yeah, it's definitely stages. This kind of goes back to my girls in their art books too. Um, they're definitely, you know, they might have be in a stage where like, mom, why are you keeping that, you know, thing I drew in kindergarten or whatever. But as they have, you know, as they get older, definitely, I have heard that story so many times, how perspective changes and that, um, you know, as they start their own families, as they have kind of their own aha moments about what is, uh, what they want to keep, that they value more what you're doing for them, right? So, and uh, I know that they, 
they enjoy seeing some of those things. So, um, and that's, Lynette says, so true. <laughs> Just because they say they don't want it doesn't mean, you know, later on. So definitely um, understand that. Okay. And Terry, you didn't miss, you hopped on there, but we are wrapping. I hope you, <laughs> hope you can watch the replay. Always here um, for the replay. So, Lynn, Annette has a question. Do you put a note in your power sort box that you have um, everything in the bigger envelope outside? Yeah, so it's always good to cross connect, just like I was showing you either on your um, photo folder, right? Which, you know, to me, this is always kind of my go-to. I, I just love having you know, uh, the ability to kind of flip through my folders and see what pages I want to create. So I love that. And, and so what I would do is most likely, you know, again, just make that note on the folder. Or if you're doing a power sort, um, basically you should be pulling that memorabilia and putting it in here as you're doing that sort, right? Um, but definitely label that's one of my big things um when uh let me see where was i going to put that oh i had that down right as you uh another great tip thank you annette because i didn't have it didn't really fit in one of these but maybe it, it would be in this one get it all in one place the remember there's this saying something like the palest ink is better than the strongest memory. I don't know, something like that. Do you guys remember that quote? But I have learned my lesson so <laughs> many times of not writing down either in pencil, post-it, or pen, the three Ps, pencil, post-it, or pen um, on whatever it is that you want to store. So as you're doing that, you know, if you're a newer mom, younger mom, oh, don't I recommend as soon as you get something, put a little date and pencil in the corner somewhere. It's going to help you so much, so much later on. Um, or if you are, you know, very good at keeping up, then all the better. Okay. So hopefully <laughs> record, record, write it down, get those notes in there. Okay. So Donna's new. Welcome, Donna. Just found me a few days ago <laughs> from Missouri. Welcome. Okay. Um, and Yudi says she has her niece, niece and nephews calling to find if you have their pictures of when they were small. Oh, my goodness. Yep. My sister doesn't have anything. And then you <laughs> love their reaction. Well, yes, I do. <laughs> And that, that's why we do, part of why we do what we do, right? That's it. Um, for that reaction and for, you know, just kind of the celebration of people we love. Okay, so those are my three tips for you for today. Create a hub. Get it all in one place. My three tips for memorabilia. We could talk about memorabilia all day. And I hope you like some of the ways to organize and, you know, the different horizontal, vertical. I tend to see myself always kind of leaning towards vertical, but I do <clears throat> love those horizontals for some of my projects as well. Second, choose your storage. Okay, what we were just talking about. Vertical or horizontal? What works best for you? What kind of person are you? Do you like to grab a container or grab a section of things? Um, oh, another, I should just say, another horizontal storage, perfect horizontal storage, would be... <clears throat> One second. I haven't, I, I've kind of switched out of these, so I forget about it are the power layout boxes, right? So let me see if I can get, there we go. This one is Family Big Moments. I just put that label on there, whoops, right here. And so I had a bunch of these. You can see they're a little dusty. Haven't used them for a while. But if you are a horizontal, if you like horizontal storage, these are another um, good product. 
for you. And they're easy to label as well. Okay, so vertical or horizontal, or you might like the iris cases or, you know, even the big iris boxes like, like these, right? Or Creative Memories has their version as well. Okay, so horizontal, vertical. We talked about a lot of vertical options for you. And third, I want you guys to write this down on a post-it. <laughs> Keep perspective and be selective. And I think we that all is said within balance, right? Just like we heard from Yudi and we heard from um, some of you guys, it's, you never know, you know, depending on the season of everybody's life, you don't want to throw everything away, right? But you can make the choice of what really is meaningful for you and your family. So keep that perspective and be selective. I know that when I've looked through my kids' stuff, that has really helped um, for kind of, you know, I, I, another term you might say is it's a highlight reel. I know we talked about that before too. I want what's in their albums to be a highlight reel and not absolutely every single thing that they did. It's got to be the things that make them special or feel special. That's what's important for me to have uh, documented. Okay, so think of that highlight reel, be selective, keep perspective, and remember your why and who. Okay? Okay, so, um, oh, Lynette had a, another great <clears throat> horizontal storage. Keep your secret boxes boxes, <laughs> right? That's a great horizontal storage as well um, for free. Absolutely horizontal storage. So you could definitely label those boxes. Those are really nice boxes, aren't they? Okay, and Pam says she has her son's memorabilia and in two gallon size Ziploc bags. Yes, yeah, I know, Ziplocs. That's what we used to use all the time, right? <laughs> okay, so, um, all right. And Sandy says, yep, you don't need to scrap everything. I give you permission. I give you all permission. You don't have to scrap every photo. You don't have to keep every bit of memorabilia. I laughed when I started really going through some of mine and going, why, why am I keeping this card from a coworker? I can't even remember the occasion it was from. And I can barely remember the coworker because it was so long ago. So I know it's that, that first original, you know, kind of inset where I have to scrap everything. I have to scrap everything, but you don't. I promise you don't. You'll never get it done. So just pick things that bring you joy, that are meaningful, and um, that that mean the most to you. Okay, so, um, and Beverly said, is this video going to be somewhere? Yeah, so this video stays on my Facebook page. It'll always be in my feed, but you'll have to scroll down because I'm always posting on Facebook. Or you can go to my YouTube channel at Craft Some Joy and it will be on my craft room organization playlist. So you can see all the videos I've done like this on my um, craft room organization playlist on YouTube. Okay, so if you um, wanna take a look at those links again, let me just put that up. Um, if you're interested in the, power, the project totes from Creative Memories and you don't have an advisor, I'd love to be your advisor. Um, there's my Facebook group. They also have the power sort box and the layout boards that I mentioned. Facebook, definitely um, you can follow me here on Facebook or on YouTube. And I have the Progress on Projects Facebook group, which is also another place we talk about all kinds of um, ways to make progress on your projects, including organization and we had so much fun talking about carts so if you are interested in seeing all the amazing ways people have used carts to organize um, check out my pop facebook group and uh, 
I have to say here, I, I, I meant to grab the exact quote before I jumped on today and I forgot, but um, someone left a comment saying, I, I hope I can remember this correctly, and I'm sorry for not <laughs> giving you credit, but um, check out, it's in comments somewhere. But she was saying one of her philosophies, and I'll have to find it and share it next time. One of her philosophies of good organization skills is being able within one reach or one, and if you're here today, let me know, one reach or one you know drawer or something to be able to put things away, right? And I think that to me, it clicked to me about my cart. That's what I love about my cart is that it's one step away. It's It sits right here next to me, but if I want to put my tape runner away, it's one reach <laughs> and it's put away. If I wanna put away my scissors, it's one reach. My multi-purpose tool, it's one reach. I love that idea of one reach and you can put it away. So maybe it's opening a drawer, like behind me, I have my drawer of um, templates and cutting patterns, it's one reach. It's not like, you know, 15 boxes that I have to open and then it's put away. So that I thought was another great organization tip. Try to keep that process as streamlined and as narrow as possible. Same with memorabilia, what we were just talking about. Have your system set so that when you get memorabilia, you get to touch it one time and then you have a place to put it. To me, that's what really made a difference when I'm starting to go through and sift through piles and piles of memorabilia. <laughs> I'm there with you. Okay, so, all right. I think, and I'm seeing the happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I love it. Thank you all. I hope you have a beautiful holiday if you are celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, I am so excited. We are going to be celebrating with my husband's mom who is turning 93. So big hugs and love to Betty, who um, we're so happy to spend some time with. Her birthday is always right around Thanksgiving. And so it's always fun to celebrate with her. So uh, have a wonderful holiday. Thank you for dropping in today. I know it's a, a holiday week, so I don't want to keep you too long, but I do, again, just want to give you some food for thought, some ideas, some ways. Maybe the aha will go off for you and you can um, decide, oh, that, that makes sense. And that's how I want to get my organization, my memorabilia hub set up. Okay, so... There we have it. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you all for your comments and your Thanksgiving blessings. And we will see you all soon. I'll be back next week for another Tidy Up Tuesday. And until then, I hope you take time to craft your joy. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now.